as we move beyond you know actually having an infrastructure in place with you know networks like electrify america having crossed the country now we need to start to be more mindful of what people are there for and the use case of uh, putting in equipment in that place welcome to another coffee in kilowatts a little bit different this week i do not have a coffee but i thought we would take a little bit of a tour around some of the local charging spots um, and some of the different speeds that we see uh, to talk about fitting the charging speed and charging equipment to the location you're in so we have pretty good uh, infrastructure around greater boston you know towns with level two stations up around six seven kilowatts we have a small amount of 25 kilowatt stations at dealerships 25 kilowatts can be classed as dc fast charging but most people are looking for at least 50 kilowatts for that plenty of EVgo stations that deliver that, and then the handful of Electrify America stations, which are up to 150, 350 kilowatt. Previously, we've been in a place where we are looking for any charging station. You know, if it's if there's a 50 kilowatt, that's great. Uh, if it's more, fantastic. But basically, we stop where there's a charging station because there aren't so many of them that you have a real choice. Uh, it's starting to change a little bit. You can start to think about where you're stopping and where you might like to be, and also what speed charging suits that uh, stop. Okay, so coffee unlocked, yummy. And that's about uh, 30 or 40 minutes. That's good for about 10, 15 miles maybe. So you can see that for a quick break, quick uh, coffee break, not really worth a lot of your time. I mean, it's good. These are free and you park here anyway. So it makes sense to plug in. The other side of this uh, site that's nice is up here, you may start to see some bikes. There goes one zipping up and down. So this is a great place to bring the bikes, unload and go and do two or three hours of cycling. You could see being charging here for a good while. It's great for people who want to linger for several hours and in a town uh, center, you may want to do that. But anything that is, you know, small, short errands, it's not gonna be a whole lot. It's nice to have, we definitely appreciate it, but it's more of a calm and linger kind of place. We're gonna move on now. We have coffee in hand and uh, we'll see if we can find a 25 kilowatt station. <laughs> Okay, so the best I can do in terms of the 25 kilowatt stations is this uh, slightly overgrown and sad looking Bosch station. It does have a vault next to it, so there's some EV action here. And they do, this is a pretty good dealership for Bolt EVs as well, but uh, unfortunately their, their dealership charging has been offline for many months. We have used this on occasion before, but you can see, I mean, like with many dealerships, there's not a whole lot around here. You know, it tends to be near gas stations and uh, other dealership. 25 kilowatt stations could be good for grocery shopping for uh, 45 minutes to an hour. You're going to get a good chunk, you know, as we say, a third or a half of your battery back. But it does show an example of the size of the equipment. It's not quite as expensive, not as expensive to install. And that's medium speed fast charging. Now let's move on to 50 kilowatts and slightly faster. This is a one of the Pretty standard EVgo units, 50 kilowatts. It's at a Whole Foods market. Not a lot else around here. A couple of restaurants maybe, but uh, it's there on the 50 kilowatt unit. Um, so 50 kilowatts fits that mold, but the the cost of doing that is probably prohibitive. Okay, so that was a 42 minute stop. Gave us 50% of the battery back. 
let's pull over and let someone else use this. We've got an Uber driver camped out on the other one. So all done with the tour of charging facilities in the greater Boston area, but we're still here at the Shell Garage, uh, Logan Airport for the moment, complimentary two times 50 kilowatt stations. We were there for 42 minutes in the end and went from 9% to 59%. So half the battery. A 40, 50 minute charging stop at a gas station normally wouldn't be the way you'd uh, think of doing it. If you're coming through Boston and literally just using this site to fill up, it's not really an ideal location for a quick fill up and move on. Anything that is um, significantly above the 50 kilowatt standard, which has now become the kind of the lowest point, if you like, um, of what people would consider fast charging. 25 kilowatt is just better in a pinch. If that's what you get, you certainly prefer that than a, a level two. Often they're free or very low cost and with stuff like the 150 kilowatt or 350 kilowatt stations around for Electrify America. You're just not going to trade off that. Uh, loss of time for a free charge or a cheaper charge, you know, it, it doesn't make sense in the uh, grand scheme of things. How do we fit charge speed to charge location? Um, and that's the topic of today. I'm going to reference an article that uh, was shared by one of uh, the friends of the channel, Jeremy, on Twitter, and I appreciate that. Thank you postulates that we've spent too much of our effort not thinking really about where to install EV charging equipment. It's been too much of a race to uh, get faster and faster. The article makes sense on that point. There, there is an arms race in some ways to get as fast charging as possible. So we'll assume, you know, Tesla 250 kilowatts. Most non-Tesla cars at the moment uh, are maxing out at least at 150 kilowatts and that's what the ones coming down the line seem to be. So you see the, the progression towards that as the speed of choice. Um, and Evolve New York, the stations that uh, they're putting in, which are designed specifically for traversing the state, you know, they want to get these stations in every 40 or 50 miles and allow you to, to get off where you want pretty much, facilitate travel across, you know, a 300, 400 mile stretch of upstate New York and around the uh, rest of the state. So they're looking at 150 kilowatts because they see that as partially future-proofed. You know, there are still um, vehicles that will charge faster than that. Obviously that won't max out a Porsche Taycan, but for the vast majority of EVs, that's gonna be quick enough. And it dovetails into some of the coffee and kilowatts topics we've uh, talked about before on how fast do we need to charge. A lot of people in that seem to say, you know, 15 to 20 minutes would be fine to me if I can get you know, 150, 200 miles of range in that time, then it'd be on to the next one. And by the time you've done 400 or 500 miles, it's probably time for a meal break. So I hesitate to criticize because the article overall, I agree with it. Um, we shouldn't be putting too much of a gasoline mindset into electric vehicle charging. Electric vehicle, um, charging in most almost every speed is passive uh we've talked about plug and charge in the last coffee in kilowatts and i think the advantage is where we take um electric vehicle charging and make it a passive activity you plug in and make it as convenient and thoughtless as possible you just plug your car in and go and do whatever you were going to do at the rest area at the grocery store at the movie theater wherever it is um, in almost every case, I think that's what we want to do. We don't have the speeds right now to get up to five, 10 minute charging. And I don't even know if we really need it. You know, that may be the criteria for some gasoline uh, car drivers to switch, but we need to get in the next way that people, people who are open to spending a little bit longer at a rest stop, you know, not really caring because they get the advantage of filling up at home because they don't have to go out of their way every week in normal daily errands and driving to uh, fill up their car. They just start off with 80, 90%. Um, and the convenience locally is obviously not having to plug in, being able to drive past gas stations and not think about it. So when we consider the charging station or charging site based on dwell time, how long someone is gonna stay there and what activities they're going to do, in the meantime, rather than how fast we can get them to charge, it becomes more electric vehicle thinking. There are various levels then of that, you know, the uh, 
if I take some of the sites we've looked at today, starting at the Shell Garage here uh, with the Shell Recharge, this specific site should be, you know, 50 kilowatts is okay. There probably should be more of those things along that line over there. But 50 kilowatts for an airport, if you think about the Uber driver over there that was using it, the uh, people who probably opportunity charge when they're waiting for a, someone on an airport run, the that people may hop off the interstate and use this, but it's more likely that they would go to an Electrify America station and there are three within about 20 miles of here. So they would probably use those instead of uh, this particular station. But in, in normal terms, a gas station with its limited uh, facilities probably should have 150 kilowatt plus charging. At that point, you know, whether they should be in a gas station or not is its own topic. But if they are, because people like Shell, Petro Canada providers are going to start to play around and experiment with um, electric vehicle charging, that's just what they've got the amenities for. They have all the, you know, uh, accoutrements for the car, the uh, accessories that you'll want. But that does mean that gas stations in towns and cities probably aren't relevant for EV charging. You know, you, you have other options there. And then we move on to places like retail centers and town centers. Um, and you've got to, again, think about the dwell time. How long do people want to stay there? The general shopping trip, plus maybe a little bit of food in a food court, two hours seems you know ample for that kind of activity so in that case you you don't really need 150 or you know 350 kilowatt stations as you tend to get you know especially these premium outlet places where uh, Electrify America has partnered with Simon properties they have 150 kilowatts 350 kilowatts and it's just you know for the particular place it's really not necessary but again these are these are sites serving people who are coming off the highway if i think about up, upstate new york on the throughway waterloo premium outlets i'm not going there because i want to shop i'm going there because that's the only station within you know 100 miles in either direction we need to get to having so much more redundancy on these trips that you can say all right well i, I see that one's at a retail center and I really don't want to stop for that long so I don't need to go off the road and do that I'd rather hop off at a rest area take take my 15 minutes you know once we get these 150 kilowatt capable cars and uh, just be on my way again as quickly as possible we move on to level 2 charging which on the face of it it's it's the least interesting uh, form of charging. It's a bit too slow to really say in almost any case other than overnight charging. You know, it's the equivalent of home charging on uh, 240 volts. It's, it's If you're there for a long time, it's good. If not, it's kind of underwhelming. You could spend several hours and uh, get, you know, only 50, 60 miles back. But it still plays a role because if you think about people who maybe don't have home charging, don't have work charging. If there are plugs everywhere and there are a level two, the level two investment, if that's in every town, as it kind of is starting to be around my area, at least in greater Boston, wherever you go, there's going to be a level two plug. So sure, for one visit, that one or two hours that you spend isn't gonna be particularly impressive. But as you start to add that into, you know, every day of your activities, that adds up through a week, just requires a, a good density of uh, those level two charges in place around your local area. A lot of these, you know, relatively inexpensive stations in a lot of different places can start to really um, make people feel comfortable. So I think the any criticism of L2 and the amount that have gone in over the last 10 years is, uh, is misplaced. I think there is a valid argument to say we don't need everything to be 350 kilowatt charging. Not everything even needs to be 150 kilowatt charge. And it's at state level, people are trying to, to get charges in the right place. Uh, I think that now needs to extend to the equipment that we buy. You know, how much do we want to spend for a charger in a retail center or a town center? Or, you know, what type of people are using those? And that, that will evolve a little bit as we start to get you know, wider EV adoption and uh, more people using the plug. So it's over to you again. Obviously, this series uh, is mainly designed to get people talking and thinking about uh, the topics that we raise. Um, I'd like to know what your use case is. You know, uh, is, do you charge predominantly at home and you don't really care about public charging anywhere except on a road trip? 
do you would you value having more charging equipment in uh, places that you regularly go anyway or what kind of charging equipment you think would fit it very future proofed um, fast charging stations or simply you know have them think much more about dwell time and the reason that people are there how long they're going to stay and fit the charging equipment that they install to that specific use case uh, as I say let us know in the comments it's always fun to hear different thoughts we get a lot of new topics kind of flowing away just because people have a chat and start to suggest their own ideas so that's where I get a lot of the um, inspiration for the next video after that thanks for watching as always appreciate your thoughts and enjoy your coffee